what of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing given to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Show it to show thyself approved unto God a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, Christ being the end of the law, he has not made us lawless, but rather he has given us a new law. This new law of spirituality. Very few people will understand this new law of spirituality. This new law will glorify the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the maximum. The manifestation of the new law could be made for us only when we are walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, and using a rebound, which is 1 John 1 9, much more needed than our breath when we think we can survive only by breathing a breath. The manifestation of the new law. The new law of the spirit of life or spirituality is manifested in the believer when Lord God the Holy Spirit controls his soul through the rebound and by filling of the spirit which is Ephesians 5.18b. The filling will be made into distortion by many people but rather it could be controlled. That could be a right term to be translated for the Greek pleroma. It meant to say it controls you wherewith when you have been used as a filling many so called tongues movement crowd or the crowd of the faith healers, miraculers or people who think until and unless you have baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit you cannot be controlled. But that is not the criteria over here dear brethren. The criteria here is when you sin that is either by your thought, word or deed. It is your old sin nature whom you want and your old sin nature takes control of your all sin natures lust patterns and it will yield for you to sin but when you rebound when you use 1 john 1 9 it is lord god the holy spirit once again taking care because this is the ministry in this church age our lord and savior jesus christ prayed on behalf of us to be sanctifying us in the truth so this 1 john 1 9 is a license to get back and serve that great lord so that we can work upon that sanctification which lord has clear mandated us to be sanctified in his truth and when we are under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit the number one priority will be for us to learn the mind of Christ which is Bible doctrine it is not emotional based worship services it is not Christian programs Christian activisms as many people replace even with the ministry of the Holy Spirit baptism telling that they will be free from demon possession demon possession to a believer never in the past Testament or in the future or in the present is possible demon cannot even come close to you if there is anything that the demon can work it should be a demonic influence for you by such false doctrines like a vacuum which could be sucked in because for the matiosis of your soul and that emptiness of your soul because when you don't have doctrine ultimately anti doctrine will come and take place in it this anti doctrines are nothing but this false teachings this false miracles crowd this false jumping dancing and thinking that this is the only order of the worship and forgetting John 4 24 which tells those who worship our Lord must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth therefore the manifestation of the new law wherewith we are not lawless but lawful telling to the point we being controlled by Lord God the Holy Spirit by the filling ministry or controlling ministry is the believer in Christ who will in return take time to grow up in the word of the Lord and put number one priority for Bible doctrine and he can manifest the spirit ministry in our lives. In the case of a new or immature believer, the filling of the Lord God the Holy Spirit is sporadic because he is ignorant of rebound and without Bible doctrine to replace human viewpoint with divine viewpoint, he continues in his old pattern of thinking. However, the pattern of thinking, the mental block, the mental sickness is what James 5.14 and 15 tells to us for us to be prayed. When you the anointed one, that is what every believer has been anointed. Every believer 
Father has been given that unction so that the all efficient grace is enough for us through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to acknowledge the truth, to understand the truth, to rightly deliver the truth, and to get number one priority for biblical truth. But when he has been mentally blocked, that is what it could be more clear rather than the sickness. The Greek verb used there has much more meaning than this mental sickness. It has a lot of difference between camno and the other word which could be used there for the translation. It meant to say when you are being varied out mentally. This mentally is the thinking pattern for the sporadic believer who is immature, who doesn't have the faith in the Lord God's word, who always includes the faith with replacement of evidence. When he fails upon to look by, by faith alone in Christ alone. In fact, even that woman, when she came to meet Elijah, she would have told that Elijah to pray on behalf so that you could, she could have that healing or in fact the son could have raised to birth but she was very much anxious she was not aware what to be done so she thought for a momentary relief when Elijah was sent through that rod or staff that rod or staff cannot carry anything but rather until and unless she could ask Elijah to accompany him that's what dear brethren faith has really marvelous impact even the centurion was being told by my lord and savior jesus christ this have been marveled by looking this man's faith there is none other great faith in israel than this man of centurion that's what dear brethren we need to understand the principle of the mediation wherewith with the staff of the rod that lord could heal them that lord could set them aright is no way practiced in the bible bible doesn't entertain them bible doesn't doesn't recognize them Bible in fact indeed never collects them to the point that through mediation the works could be done to emphasize the significance of the true prophet Elijah was being used in the replacement for Elisha so dear brethren Elisha was being used in the replacement of Elijah. So an immature believer, his thinking pattern should be changed. However, the better he understands sin and the repercussions of sin, and the more often he applies the rebound technique, the longer he will be able to maintain the controlling power ministry of Ladgar the Holy Spirit, and the more Bible doctrine he will assimilate. The Ladgar the Holy Spirit metabolizes doctrine into divine viewpoint in the soul of every believer. Metabolism is derived from the classical Greek noun which meant to say metabole, meaning metamorphosis or transformation. When food is consumed, the human body converts it into nourishment for physical growth and eliminates harmful waste material. By analogy, when Bible doctrine spiritual food is eaten under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is converted to nourishment for spiritual growth and eliminates human viewpoint in the Christian life. So when the believer grows up in Bible doctrine, its spiritual growth must eliminate human viewpoint in the Christian life as told in Jeremiah 15:16a. But the problem in today's Christendom, the pastors are only not able to get out of this human viewpoint, but rather they have become advocates of this human viewpoint rather than becoming a rightly dividing the word of truth of divine viewpoint. So, dear brethren, it is a humble plea of request for you all. For the believer to mature spiritually, there must be in his soul a balance of residency between the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and Bible doctrine. The controlling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, coupled with the positive evolution of the believer and consistent intake of doctrine, establish this dark balance of residency. So, in Ephesians 3.16, he would grant according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through the spirit in the inner man. So, we, the soul of the believer is connected with the function of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and Bible doctrine. So, in Ephesians 3.14, that introduces the purpose of Paul's prayer, which begins in Ephesians 3.14. The literal clause of verse 16 reads that he would once and for all give you, according to the riches of his spirit in the soul, the principle, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, control of the inner being or soul is the source of the power for our spiritual lives. In Ephesians 3.17, so that Christ may dwell, that is, katakio, in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in 
love. So Christ may dwell in your hearts as also expresses the purpose. Just as we previously examined the Hebrew word Ashab meaning dwelling in peace. Now we see its great counterpart Kataike Io meaning to dwell at home in relaxation and at ease. It is possible to be in a house even to live there at not be at home. Some of you may have had that experience. However, this phrase says, in effect, that when Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, controls the soul, Christ is at home in your life. Experientially, Christianity is what you think, as told in Proverbs 23 7, and how you are motivated, not the facade you practice on the outside, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, which delineates a manifestation of the willing ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, when the believer is rooted and grounded from a foundation of doctrine. So it has been told in Philippians 1.20, according to my earnest expectation and hope, absolute confidence, that I shall not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ shall even now as always be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Here we have another manifestation of filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the phrase, Christ exalted in my body, as been told for us in Christ may dwell in your hearts. So Christ will be glorified by the execution of the spiritual life of the believer, accomplished through the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and maximum doctrine resident in the soul. My children, with whom I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you, as told in Galatians 4.19, Paul uses the greeting, my children, not as a term of affection, but to rebuke the Galatians. When adults start scrapping, you tell them to stop acting like children or stop being childish. The Galatians had been conducting themselves in a childish way by gossiping and maligning that had failed to rebound, but had suckers for false doctrines and remained spiritual babies, of whom I am again in labor might be translated, I am sweating you out. Paul continues to reprimand and teach them doctrine in expectation of the recovering of the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and advancing to maturity. Today, no pastor teacher has been sweating out to rightly divide the world of truth. The phrase, until Christ is formed in you, is another manifestation of the new law through which Christ is glorified by the believer in the church age, reaching spiritual maturity. So, we can grow up only when we have number one priority for Bible doctrine. If you cannot be under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to understand this truth, Lord, help you. So in the next step, we shall continue our discourse. And now, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, inaudibly telling to Lord God, the Father, that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself we shall have this eternal life. This eternal life is for you for free when you express your evolution as an unbeliever to turn out from dichotomous nature to trichotomy by a simple act of faith. And whereas for a believer, it is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and for the pastor teacher it is to communicate the word of truth accurately and if you fail to do that don't worry you have a damn archer of my witnesses to be answered back and if you're not able to look upon that Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ so, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us and challenge us in these things. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.